Live from San Juan, Puerto Rico, it's theCUBE. Covering Blockchain Unbound. Brought to you by Blockchain Industries. Hello, welcome back everyone. I'm John Furrier, the co-host of theCUBE. Exclusive coverage here in Puerto Rico for Blockchain Unbound, it's a global conference where a lot of the leaders are coming together. It's our second day of wall-to-wall -wall coverage. Uh, talking to all the top people, government officials, entrepreneurs, investors, uh, and, and tons of great, great uh, action here. Our next guest is Marcus Levin, who's the co-founder of XYO Network, xyo.network is the URL. Interesting opportunity. Um, really built from the ground up, no outside funding, although they've done some interesting things with their community. Great IoT example, great use of the cloud, great example of how real entrepreneurs are working with crypto and blockchain to actually grow. Welcome to theCUBE. Thank you, John. So tell me a little bit about um, what you guys do. Take a minute to explain to the audience what XYO Network is, why, how did you get here, what's it all about? Yeah, sure. So XYO Network is the world's first decentralized location Oracle. Oracle means, uh, Oracle means um, data input into smart contracts. Right now you have the problem that a lot of uh, data sources are centralized and hackable or spoofable. So you, if you make a, a bet, for example, you need to look uh, at the results of the bet at the website. The website could be hacked or you could collude with someone yeah. to provide wrong data. Um, the same problem exists with GPS. GPS is easily spoofable and hackable. Like during the Pokemon Go craze, for example, all the kids just downloaded the GPS spoofing up. They got all the rare Pokemons. Or allegedly, the Iranians took down an American drone a few years back, sending up a wrong GPS signal. The drone just landed. So because of that, you can't do transactions based on location data. Today, most applications for, uh, for location, GPS location are navigational, but not transactional. We solve this by providing a decentralized uh, location data or network. We do this uh, through IoT devices and mobile phone apps and other types of partnerships. We are around since 2012, we started as an IoT company which provided location beacons, uh, we call it XY Find It. We have about a million of them out there and uh, they can recognize each other's location. It's like us two taking a selfie together, we print out two copies, put our sig signatures on them when we leave each other, um, we can prove that we were here together. And uh, it's the same thing with those devices, with our own devices, but also with partnerships we build with mobile app distributors and IoT companies. So what can you do with this? Um, so you could, for example, do a payment upon delivery for e-commerce. So uh, could put a chip, a small chip like an RFID chip into an Amazon packaging tape. Um, once the package arrives at your doorstep or even in your house, uh, the payment gets triggered. It works by your doorbell, your Tesla in the driveway, your neighbor's cell phone, uh, any type of connected device recognizing that the package is there, the payment automatically gets triggered. Uh, one third of Americans experienced port theft in 2016. You, um, don't know if it was a UPS driver, for example, scanning the package for taking it, or your neighbor took the package, or someone random came by. Uh, this way, you can prevent port theft or you can discover it. Uh, or you can make sure your kids arrived safely at school, they arrived there with their friends, and they took the path you wanted them to take. Uh, or um, or the, uh, this uh, hotel review sites, for example, have the problem that they uh, lose their users because they don't believe uh, that the reviews are real anymore. But if you could prove someone flew from San Diego, that's where we're based, to Puerto Rico, stayed at this hotel for two nights, and then flew back, and wrote a review about it, suddenly you have a location verified review. So that's all today. But in, in a world in like five to 10 years, full of AIs, robots, self-driving cars, drones, uh, smart cities, you need transactional location data. Nobody is providing that today, and we want to be that center of the future. Awesome. So it's super exciting. I got to ask you about the IoT piece because do you need physical devices out there? So is it, you, are you deploying sensors? Are you leveraging pre-existing infrastructure? I love yep. that selfie example. I can imagine that we do a selfie, we yep. share it. It's a location-based opportunity. The phone's got location-based. How do you guys interface with this? What, how does it work? Yeah, so right now the network builds on top of our own uh, devices. We are around since 2012, as I said, so we have a large network already. We are an existing company, it's a little rare yeah. in the blockchain space. And um, we uh, build partnerships now with I IoT companies like uh, 
a certain light bulb division company or fridges, all connected mm -hmm. devices, mobile up to CBO. So you're providing your customers, the IoT device folks who are pro proliferating out there. Yeah, we put our code basically out there. We can, uh, open it's source? open source, okay. yeah, and you can plug it as an SDK into, let's say, your mobile app. Now you can use it as a monetization tool as well because uh, you earn tokens as you verify location and you know, this look, data is part of an answer. And uh, so you've, you could earn XYO tokens as you become, a, we call them Sentinels, location verification device in, in our network. So how do you guys tie this together on the token side? So you reward, what behavior do you reward with the token? Yeah, so there are four components in our network. There's the Sentinels I spoke about, which are the IoT devices or mobile phones, which verifies the location. Uh, then you have bridges, which uh, relay the data. They relay it into something we call the archivist, which is a distributed computing system. If you're familiar with storage in the space here, for example, or the yeah. old system like uh, 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 City at Home from Berkeley, uh, it works like that. Uh, so so on, the data is on people's personal computers. Yeah. And then uh, we have something we call the diviner algorithm, which is uh, provides the answers. It works like mining. So from you might want to ask, where's my package right now? And uh, you, the question gets sent to the network, a bunch of diviners, uh, like, which works like mining, like Ethereum, yeah. transactional things. Uh, a bunch of diviners will take the data from the archivist, the distributed computing system, uh, and try to find the best answer and try to find as close as possible to consensus as they can. What about, all, what about spoofing? I mean, people might want to spoof the location. Yes. How do you prevent spoofing? Yeah, that's a good question. Uh, so we too, right, we could collude pretty easily, right? Uh, <laughs> and, uh, but if we are this entire room of people it's, uh, who you usually don't know, it's very difficult to collude. Um, so one of them is scale. Then we build reputation over time. So as your answers are probable, you build uh, reputation. For example, all we, all of us say, we're here at this hotel right now, but you say, no, we're in Shanghai. Your answer is improbable, and your reputation goes down. In addition to that, we disincentivize lying. So you're very data-driven. Extremely. This is big time analytics. Extre extremely data-driven. So what are you guys doing for analytics, and what chain are you using? Because um, performance becomes an issue. How's yep. the plumbing work? What's the analytics look like? Take a minute to explain that. Yeah, uh, it's very beautiful. We have our own chain, the XYO main chain. So our we are an oracle which plugs into any type of smart contract. You know, you have uh, Ethereum and about 19 other coins there which have smart contracts. So from our, we build on our chain to uh, lower the transaction costs, uh, transaction times, and to build a more reliable network for ourselves. Yep. And then it plugs into all other smart contracts. So you have your own chain to manage yes. this. Yes. So that's one of the reasons why you, from an operations standpoint, you want to lock that down. So, yes. so you can control performance, exactly. latency, timestamps, security, exactly. whatnot. That's right. The openness is for the smart contracts. So you, is that what you're saying? I can do any yeah, smart contract yeah, I want? This is basically for old style developers, it's like an API, right? You can plug into it. It's like Got it. We connect the real world with uh, blockchain. So right now you have very limited applications for blockchain in a lot of cases because you can't take offline things yeah. and connect them to the chain. What we allow to do is, uh, we, we call it um, the API to the real world, where you t take location data, put it into the chain, and, and make it transactional. So I got to ask you a question, this is interesting, I love this, uh, we'll get into more of the, the token sale and what you guys are doing, raising money. Mm -hmm. uh, in the IoT world, certainly with cloud computing, the big debate is, do you move compute to the edge where the data is, or do you move the data back to the centralized cloud? Here, you, since you're decentralized with the IoT device, is the data coming back to your central network? Or no, it's not. where's the processing at it? At the edge? What's the edge equation? So, Explain that. Yeah, yeah, so everything is decentralized. We believe that our company doesn't need to necessarily exist in a few years, uh, and the network will live on and grow as we grow the community. So the community is very important to us. So, so devices are decentralized. You own your cell phone. Um, yeah. The data storage is decentralized. So you can define like 3% of my personal computing power goes to this, for example, you earn XYO tokens. And the mining is decentralized like any mining is decentralized today. So us as a company, once uh, you know, people start to build on that platform, we don't need to exist. And uh, which makes it beautiful, right? This is what blockchain is all about, decentralizing and uh, building this platform layer where people can build on top of. So there's a ton of Bluetooth and GPS out there. Yep. 
Talk about where you guys have got your traction. I want you to take a minute to explain. We kind of went off on a tangent on some IoT uh, <laughs> rant there that I was interested in, but I want to take it back to mainstream. Okay. There's GPS out there. You got Bluetooth. Everyone's got Bluetooth devices. Mm -hmm. So it's not like there's this massive new requirement. Yeah. You guys did some interesting things, how you funded your first token sale. Right. You have customers. You've been around for how long? 2012. 2012, you've been yeah. successful. No outside capital, so yep. you bootstrapped, you made things happen, had some revenue come in. What, how'd you do it? What, take us through that, that progression. Yeah, so we co-founders worked in various ventures together previously. One of our co-founders, the main founder, I would say, Ari Tro, he uh, started this company in 2012 and uh, we bootstrapped it with $7 million of our own cash and one and a half million venture debt. We really believe in what we you do. You guys put up a lot of capital. Yes, we believe in what we do. We believe in our capabilities uh, to attract the right teams. We have an amazing team yeah. and uh, yeah. It's, uh, it's, That's it, skin in the game. Yeah, it's skin in the game and uh, it's actually a low risk investment for me because I know about the capability of what we are capable of. You're and underwriting your own cap your confidence. Exactly, exactly. Um, okay, so, so you got seven million of your own cash. You guys, did you pass the hat around? You all kind of contribute money in? Or? It was mostly from Ari, actually. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but uh, we uh, all have skin in the game there. Um, but, um, so we so you have a community, so then, then you launch your idea. What happened next? Exactly. So then uh, uh, the VCs started to come. You know, we did some outreach. VCs started to come. They're interested in our idea. You know, they love what we do. It's our platform is right, quite sexy right now in, in blockchain. We are a platform, and you can build a lot on top of it. We pushed off the VCs, and uh, we said we want to take community money first. The reason is... We, be, we believe in, in building this strong community of evangelists, people who believe in us, who want to code with us. Uh, we went to all the developer conferences, not to uh, like investor conferences or something like that. Mm -hmm. And um, so we marketed uh, to about 2,300 people our token sale. And uh, a, a little under 500 people uh, put uh, some Ethereum into our token sale. And 95% uh, of them were under 5F. That was a very wow. global community. Was that a utility token sale? Yes. Uh, Outside the US because of credit investors involved? Or was it, what was this? So it, it's clearly a utility token because you can build on top of it. Last weekend, the city of San Diego and 120 hackers and an IoT company were in our office to build on, on top of our chain traffic flow and parking solutions uh, for the city of San Diego. But um, so it, it's clearly a utility token. But because of the uncertain regulatory environment, we are actually running it like it's a security. So we have a Reg A, Reg D, Reg S, we, whatever. We have 115 different jurisdictions we look at. I spoke during the whole process. I'm not lying. It's 20. That's a lot of work. Yeah, 23 lawyers I spoke with. It's a lot of hours with lawyers on the phone. Like <laughs> the most aggressive one of them, uh, she suggested to me is, is a structure with uh, no taxes, but 20% prison potential, I think, and <laughs> on the other side. It's a good cause, you're doing it right. So you spent a lot of money to, yeah. get, to make sure that your community was involved. Yes. And then and they weren't throwing a lot of money, it was like they're millionaires, they're like, what's the throw, thousand dollars? Yep. That kind of numbers? Yes, exactly. So it's not like you're breaking the bank, but they feel ownership. Absolutely. So if you look at our Telegram and then channel. you raised what, a million, two million, three million? Uh, 1.7. So from we, the community? Yeah, from the only community, those 400 people. We had it open for about five to six days. We, we closed it down. We didn't take any money anymore. And uh, since yesterday, I started talking with institutionals again. And now we have a sexy story. So now they yeah. come <laughs> again, yeah. right? Platforms are sexy. Exactly. We so, know we have one too. <laughs> That's awesome. We yeah, love, I love, we're your, we're love well, your project. Well, the thing about platforms is, is that, as you know, we talked about last night, is that the platform wars and the platform um, entrepreneurial thinking has radically changed. In the old days, it was, I got a platform and I'm going to monetize my platform for my application. Look at Facebook. They monetize right. their platform data for advertisers, not users. I am a Google search engine. I need to make the best search result so that I can get better advertising and search results for that part. But the new order is the platform value goes to the users or customers. Right, that's right, that's right. So, so not, we are not rent seeking. This, this is an open model with platforming. 100% open. There's a, a lot of, of uh, the platforms are rent seeking where a certain percent of each transaction goes to the company or to some founders or, or something. 
we don't have that at all. So what we do is for every token we sell, we allocate one to the company, and after the token sale, there's not going to be ever more XYO tokens ever again. And we use our portion to um, um, build this network, but we don't take any fees or anything there. How do you make money? Uh, the, um, building partnerships you know, with companies, helping them to, um, to uh, build on top of the chain, building the community. At some point you need to take a, a small cut of something, right? I mean, yeah, if you own half the tokens, you know, hopefully there's some value they could there. Be, okay, so you'll get yeah. the token opportunity. Yes. So on the security token, do the investors, the community, and now token holders, is that an equity security token? So they own the company with, through the tokens, right? Non-dilutive, non-voting. Equity, is that what you're thinking? Yeah, it's not an equity token. It's, a, it's still in our mind a utility token, but we do something very interesting. During the token sale event, we are going to launch an equity sale at the same time. So uh, you can decide if you know, you're comfortable in the blockchain space you know, or you want to be an equity investor, you buy equity. The disadvantage is you have less liquidity there, but you have all the protect protections and equity gives you, right? We are a California-based company with audited financial since 2012, SEC qualified and regulated. So equity in our case is a kind of sexy kind of thing. Yeah, and they had the long game, they're betting on, exactly. the, on acquisition or something else. Exactly. Uh, well, we got to get some revenue going. Well, what's next? What are you guys doing? You have token sale done, is it working? Was it going on now? Let me just check it out. You've completed it? No, it's going to start on March 20th. Uh, it's going to run for two months until May 20th, and uh, so now it's a lot of travel, speaking with people, engaging, <laughs> and uh, yeah, that's next. Well, congratulations, so Thank glad you. that Carrie on Facebook got uh, notified me of you guys. Super impressed with uh, what you're doing, and we had a great conversation last night uh, at the Monetize um, you know, roof party. Uh, great to know you guys. Uh, I think IoT really needs this kind of model right. uh, because there's a lot of real critical challenges around the role of data, the role of immutability. Um, there's all kinds of sensor devices out there, cameras, you can't go anywhere. Uh, digital cities are coming, right. smart cities, right. self-driving cars. It's going to be wired up big time, so I think you guys got a good opportunity. Thanks for coming on theCUBE. It's John Furrier here in Puerto Rico for exclusive coverage of Blockchain Unbound. More after this short break. <laughs>